my starting point was the unsolved problem of embryology, how it is that a fertilized egg grows into an embryo and uh, becomes an organism. The orthodox view here being th that it all can be explained by the genetic code, by DNA and RNA. Yes, the standard <laughs> view is that the whole of this can be explained in terms of genetic programming written into the DNA. Um, at first sight, that sounds quite plausible. And the idea of the genetic program is commonly used in ordinary everyday conversation as a kind of explanation for everything. Why do swallows migrate? Because they're genetically programmed to do so. Why do spiders spin webs? Because they're genetically programmed to do so. Um, it explains everything, but actually, when you come to think of it, nothing in any detail. Um, and the reason why it's a problem in the realm of form is fairly easy to understand if you think of your own arm and leg. And the arm and the leg have exactly the same chemicals in them, the same proteins, the same bone chemicals, the same nerve chemicals, uh, the same kinds of cells, and indeed the same DNA. The yeah. DNA is the same in all the cells of the body. Yet they have different functions. Yet they have different functions and different forms. And if the DNA alone were enough to specify the form, um, then how come the same DNA can specify different forms in different uh, parts of the body? Es especially since they both uh, originated from the same cell at one point. Yes, they all come from the same cell, and all the different cells that cell gives rise to mm -hmm. do different things. Mm -hmm. Eye cells, ear cells, yeah. uh, spleen cells, and so on. Mm -hmm. Now, if all these cells are programmed identically, they have identical DNA, how come they develop differently? Well, at this stage, um, the conventional approach has to say, well, there must be something else acting on the cells and on the DNA. And this is usually called something like complex spatio-temporal physico-chemical patterns of interaction not yet fully understood. In other words, uh, it, I suppose it's fair to say that even the most orthodox of biologists, uh, although they might not like to do so, would admit that this is an unsolved problem. Yes. and. I think that uh, there's nobody in mainstream biology who would claim this problem, problem is solved. It's one of the main unsolved problems of biology. One does meet people who know very little about biology, who assume it was all solved years ago, but no one who knows the field would claim that. Mm -hmm. um, it is a, a field in which a great deal of research is going on today, mm -hmm. um, but where even those at the leading edge of the subject aren't quite clear what way this, what new directions it should go in. And, and you see yourself as part of a tradition which actually goes back uh, quite a long way in, in biology yeah, that, that is a counterpoint to the reductionistic, mechanistic view, well, more yes. along the lines of, of the, the life energy or the vitalist tradition in biology. Yes, I mean, the, but these controversies in modern biology have a long history, and um, so for at least 300 years, in fact. Um, when the mechanistic worldview came in in physics in the 17th century, there was an immediate attempt to extend it to life, to say that just as the universe is a giant machine, so living organisms are machines. Um, but right from the beginning, this was controversial, because there were some people who said, wait a minute, you know, there are a lot of things about animals and plants and ourselves that don't seem to be like machines, even the fanciest machines you can imagine. Um, and so there's been a long uh, tradition of people arguing there must be something more to life than mere physics and chemistry. Um, and what I'm doing is in that long uh, tradition. Mm -hmm. This controversy has been raging in biology intermittently, as I say, for three centuries. For the last 50 years or so, uh, the controversy has mainly been between the mechanists on the one hand and the holists, or the um, organismic uh, biologists on the S other. Systems theorists, basically. One kind of uh, holist is the systems theorist, mm -hmm. yes. People who say that, uh, that an organism is more than just the sum of its parts. That's right. The, the general idea that the organism is more than the sum of its parts. And the problem, of course, when you say that, which I'm sure is true, is then, well, what is this more? Um, just what is it? Mm -hmm. And that is the big problem, to say mm -hmm. what this more is.
that, that is some people might say, well, it's more than just the sum of its parts, but ultimately it's still all a materialistic universe, and, and in some sense we don't have to incorporate any new energies. And then there might be others who say, no, we have to have a, a new energy, a life force, or, or something distinct. Yes. Well, what's changed the situation in the last 50 years from the period before that is that um, whereas uh, before people said either it's matter or energy, which is what physics and chemistry deal with, or it's an in, in, uh, a life force which is totally mysterious, what's happened is that physics and chemistry don't just have matter and energy now, they have fields. And fields are invisible organizing regions of influence, like the magnetic field around a magnet. And fields have holistic properties. If you think of a magnet, uh, just a regular, ordinary iron bar magnet, if you cut the magnet in two, you don't get two half magnets. You get two small but complete magnets, each with a complete field. Fields have a kind of inbuilt holistic property. Fields are more than matter, at least in their extent. And according to modern physics, matter arises from fields rather than fields from matter. Mm -hmm. So what's changed is that it's now possible, and it has been since the 1920s, to say that what the organizing factors in living organisms are um, are fields, new kinds of fields, not yet recognized by physics. And to say that is to go beyond the idea that there's an ineffable vital factor which can't be uh, named or nothing more mm -hmm. can be said about it, beyond saying it's mysterious and vital. Uh, we can now talk in terms of organizing fields. What you call morphic fields. What I call morphic fields. The word morphic coming from the Greek word morphe meaning form. and. The idea of morphic fields organizing living organisms was first put forward in the 1920s. And this idea, uh, <laughs> under the name morphogenetic fields, is widely accepted in biology today. Mm -hmm. The big problem has been to say what these fields are and how they work. And that's the starting point for my hypothesis.